am here to discuss the topic frequency analysis of rainfall or flood data which is from which is a part of hydrology okay so what do you understand by this why we do this analysis is because if you take uh, if you design for any hydraulic structure means any engi hydraulic engineering ap application you need to design a dam okay like if you if you say for example if you want to construct a dam so what you need to know is you need to know what is the maximum discharge that is coming onto the river and accordingly you can design a dam okay so frequency analysis what we do that frequency what do you mean by frequency means after how many years like after 10 years after 100 years or after 50 years the same magnitude of flood is going to happen or the same magnitude of rainfall is going to come so how so this is called as frequency analysis of rainfall or flood data why we do this basically because if we don't know what is the peak discharge coming after how many years we we, uh, we cannot design a structure for its design life right so we need to know we need to consider the factor of safety also for that so accordingly if we know that if this uh, if suppose a particular magnitude of flood is not going to come for the next 50 years if we know then it is fine the our structure is safe if it is going to come then we have to design the structure accordingly that's why we do the frequency analysis because if we don't consider this then there can be it can it can result into catastrophic failure okay so that is very important and obviously we are predicting the flood data predicting means we are we will we, two things we are going to use here in the frequency analysis of flood data that is probability because we can only predict right okay after how many 10 years or after uh, how many years and one is return period so this two concept are required in this return period <clears throat> two concepts are required basically for doing this frequency analysis of rainfall data okay so well, first is probability and next is return period and as far as this topic is concerned it is important for great point of view also you can be asked a two mark or one mark question in this okay so probability and return period concept we use probability means normally as we say probability means favorable divided by total number of events simple mathematics probability probability means favorable divided by total number of events okay now what is return period return period is also called as first the return period or reoccurrence interval it is also called as reoccurrence return period reoccurrence interval or frequency so what it is return period means after how many same thing means what is the time period between the happening of two events okay suppose if 10 centimeter or 16 of if you take 16 centimeter of rain occurred this year after how many year again this same rainfall will occur I, I, either after one year either after two year either after 10 year so frequency is a uh, return period or reoccurrence interval of frequency is what the time period between the two two events the time period between the two events okay that is called as return period reoccurrence interval or frequency okay so for doing the frequency analysis what we follow is we follow plotting position method okay what it is, what it is plotting position method for doing the frequency analysis we follow plotting position method plotting position method so what this plotting position method is so what we do is see what we are doing is we are predicting we are predicting that after how many years the same magnitude of flood or the same magnitude of rainfall will be going to occur okay so for that we are predicting right so for that we, we what we, we we will do is we cannot say on the basis of last two years or three years okay so what we will do is we will collect the data collect the value of discharge for the last 35 years for the last 30 to 35 years minimum this much amount of data we should have that's why it is called as frequency analysis of rainfall or flood data we should be having past data then only we can predict the future right so what we will do is we will collect the discharge value for last 30 to 35 years in plotting position method what we do is we 
first we collect the data, then we arrange those data in the decreasing order, and then we assign rank to them. Okay. So if we see, if I take, if I take an example, suppose if I take an example, suppose I am writing it as uh, some data I have took 65, 40, 20, 35, okay, 80, 90. This many years, just to explain you, I am taking this example, okay. <clears throat> so if I am taking this data as like 65, 40, first thing what I will do is I will arrange those data in decreasing order. Okay, so here I will be writing, this two thing is important, we will be dealing only in the frequency analysis, probability and return period. Probability how we calculate favorable divided by total number of events. How we do the frequency analysis, that is by plotting position method. And from plotting position method, I will tell you how to calculate the return period or reoccurrence interval. Okay, so from plotting position method, we will start, I will tell you, I will explain you the plotting position method, what it is basically. So, plotting position method. Plotting position method. Okay, so what it is? I have I, I have given one example. So we will take the discharge value, Q values, discharge values, discharge values in meter cube per second or whatever unit, whatever scale you want to take. Okay, so just for explaining, I am taking. 5 to 6 values, obviously you have to take 30 to 35 years of data for doing the frequency analysis, okay. So suppose if I am taking it as 60, 45, 35, whatever values you want to take, 80, 90, 140, okay like this. Now what I will do is, first thing is I have to arrange it in decreasing order. So next is arranging in decreasing order, arranging in decreasing order. So first is what decreasing order means, this is the value of Q. So first the highest discharge, discharge value that is 140, then it is 90, then it is 80, then it is 60, then 45 and then 35. Okay, this is second step which we want to do. First we want to collect the data from 30 to 35 years, then we have to arrange the data in the decreasing order. Next step is we have to assign the rank. We have to assign the rank, so rank is denoted by M, okay. So the data which is having the maximum discharge value, okay, it will be given first rank. So this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now in this data, no problem is there because no, no two values are same. But when you collect the data from 30 to 35 years, it may happen that two values coincide two values, it may happen that two values get coincide. So if the two values get coincide, suppose if you see here, if you see here, if this is 90 or if you say if this is, this is also 80, this is also 80. Now what you can do guys, what you will think that if they both have the same values, 80, 80, is it, it is it not, uh, is it good to give them different, different runs? Okay, suppose as a student, if you secure 90 percentage, your friend also secure 90 percentage, okay, if I give second rank to your friend and third rank to you, so is it, is it, is it, uh, it is not fair na, for your, uh, any case, okay, so I, I cannot do partiality in that case, so what I do is, I, I, I assign the same rank to the other value also, this will also be 7, because the value, uh, second, the, because the values are same, because the discharge values are same. So I assign the same rank to both of them. Now, if we see this 60, it is 2. Here we should not write 3, because the number of data for 35 years if we are calculating, so n is 35, capital N, number of data. So here it will be 4 only. n should not change. Okay, if I am taking 6 values, then n should not change. If I say that, now, so this is about, all about rank. Okay, now in this if I ask you to calculate the probability of 80 centimeter of rainfall equaled or exceeded, equaled or exceeded, okay, calculate the probability for 80 centimeter of rainfall, okay, 80 centimeter of rainfall or 80 meter cube of meter cube per second because this is the discharge value. If you are taking rainfall, it will be in centimeter, if I am taking discharge here, so it will be in meter cube per second. So, what is the probability that after this the rainfall will equaled or exceeded or 
uh, exceeded discharge. So how we will calculate the probability? Probability is equal to favorable divided by total. So favorable is how many cases? Equal or exceeded? 80, 1, 2, 3. 3 values. This 3 values. So probability will be equal to 3 divided by 3 divided by total is how many? 6. So 3 divided by 6. If you see 3 ones are 3 twos are. So it is 0. 0.5. Probability is coming to be 0. 0.5. In this way you have to go. Okay, so that is probability. Now next is return period. For calculating the return period or reoccurrence time, three or four formulas has been given. Okay, three formulas has been given to calculate the return period. It is very important. Sometimes in the question you will be given the values. Okay, discharge value. So first thing you have to do is you have to arrange it in decreasing order. You have to assign the ranks. And then you will be asked to calculate the return period by Webel, by any formula. To, uh, they will say like calculate it from Webel's formula or calculate it from uh, California formula or calculate it from Hazel's formula. Okay, so to calculate return period, three formulas have been given. So next is how to calculate the return period. So this was all about plotting position method. In plotting position method, what we do is we arrange the data in decreasing order and then we assign rank. After that, we calculate return period. How to calculate return period? Return period is also called as what? Reoccurrence time. So return period. Return period is denoted by capital T. Return period or reoccurrence time or frequency it is denoted by capital T. Okay. So, how to calculate return period? First method is by California formula. They have given the formulas. California formula. So, T is equal to N by M. <coughs> Where N represents the total number of data. N represents what? The total number of data and M is equal to rank assigned. Total number of data total number of data and m value is what rank assigned rank assigned okay first is california formula second is webel's formula webel's formula this is most important this is most important formula webel's formula we generally use use webel's formula we generally use Webel's formula. So Webel's formula T is equal to N plus 1 divided by M. T is equal to N plus 1 divided by M. Webel's formula is also very important. This is very important. Okay. So this is the thing to calculate the return period. <coughs> One or two formulas are, are also being given. That is <coughs> Hazen's formula. Next is Hazen's formula. So these three formulas are required for you to remember. Third is Hazen's formula. So, Hazen's formula, return period is given as n divided by m minus 0.5. n divided by m minus 0.5. One time in IES also they asked to calculate the return period by using Webel's formula and Hazen's formula. So, first what you have to do is you have to use plotting position method to locate the position of the discharge value to assign rank. So, m is here rank. So, in this way you can calculate the return period for a particular flood or for a particular rainfall data. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the formula given for three formulas. California formula T is equal to N by M. Then Webel's formula T is equal to N plus 1 divided by M. And Hazen's formula T is equal to N divided by M minus 0.5. Now if we see the probability. If you see the probability. So probability is represented by small p. And probability is inverse of return period, 1 by t. Probability is 1 by t. Okay, see if I, if the same data if I take which I have given, uh, which I have explained you the example that is 140, what it was, 140, 90, 80, like that some values, okay. 65, 45, 30, some values I have taken. Okay, and I, uh, I am giving rank to them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you, you can see from the formula that if you put, if you see this value, if you see this value, the return period for this is, see, m is 1, so return period is, total data is 6, okay. So 6 plus 1 divided by m, m is 1. If you see the probability, its probability is least, 1 upon 7. 
So the highest value, the highest value has the least probability of occurring. Obviously, it is obvious also because if the large magnitude of flood happen, okay, so it has very less probability of occurring in the next 10 or 20. That's what we are going to calculate because that peak value, the highest value is dangerous for us. Okay, so probability is inverse of return period. We, what we say is probability we represent it by P. So probability is uh, inverse of return period. Return period is denoted by capital T. From here also we can say that, see, if we see probability, if we inverse this, so the probability is 1 by 7, least probability. If you take for the last data, last data if you take, P is equal to, what it will be? First calculate the return period. So return period will be what? Return period is equal to n plus 1. It is what? n is how much? 6. 7 divided by m is 6. Rank is 6. So it will be, probability will be equal to 6 by 7. See, the least value, the least value, 30 is least, has the has the largest probability of occurring. And the highest value has low probability. Okay? So probability is inverse of return period. <laughs> probability is inverse of return period. Now we will see how to, the, the main thing which is, which we are concerned about is for risk and reliability. Okay, obviously if we see, if we calculate the data, we, we have to find out that whether there is a risk of this magnitude of flood occurring or not. Okay, so accordingly we can design the hydraulic structure. Accordingly we can take the design considerations for the hydraulic structure. So two things which is generally asked, that is risk and reliability. Reliable means we are sure that this magnitude of flood is never going to happen. So that is reliability. And what is risk? Risk means if at least once also it occurs, at least once also, if this magnitude of flood, if at least once also it occurs, then it is a risk. Because if one, we cannot take a risk, right? One time it, if it happen, if the flood of that magnitude for one time it happen, it can take many lives, okay? So that we cannot take the risk. So the two things which have been most important are risk and reliability. So how do we calculate risk and reliability? So next is how to calculate risk and reliability. So first of all, we, if we are seeing probability, we know from the 10th class onwards that probability we can calculate it by binomial event. Binomial event, what we, why we call it as binomial event? Here we calculate probability by binomial event. Why so binomial? Because either that means two cases are there. Either that much magnitude of flood will happen or not. Okay, either this will happen or not. This, uh, if I take suppose 140, if I take 140 meter cube per second of discharge will come or it will not come. Either flood will come or it will not come. So two cases are there. Bio, binomial means two, two events. Okay, so how we calculate the probability from binomial event? It is given by NCR P to the power R Q to the power N minus 1. As we know, in probability, we consider only two cases. In VC, na, like head will come or tail will, or it will not come, or tail will come. Two events are only there. So that is also a binomial event. So P means probability of happening an event. Q means probability of not happening an event. Okay, so P is here what? Probability of happening. Probability of occurring an event. Occurring an event. And Q is what? Probability of probability of not occurring an event. So Q is is equal to one uh, <coughs> Q is equal to one minus P. Okay. So it is like two events now. So P plus Q means whether it will happen or not, it is equal to one. So if you want to calculate Q, Q is equal to 1 minus P. Okay, for, see, for occurring an event, if it is P, for not occurring an, occurring an event, it is 1 minus P. So it is not occurring an event. It is represented by Q. Okay, so this is binomial event and we represent it as by NCR P to the power R, Q to the power N minus R. Sorry, this is Q to the power N minus R. This we know, this formula we know. NCR p to the power r, q to the power n minus r. Means if we take like once in 10 years, once in 10 years, if I say if this event is happening, if this event is happening once in 10 years, means r is what? Once. 1. And n is 10 years. Okay. So after, in how many years this is happening? That is called as n, n is 10, n 
and R is 1. R is means cases, means of once in 10 year, twice in 10 year, so R will be 2. Like that we have to see. So this is for binomial element. With this only we will derive risk and reliability. Okay? <clears throat> With this only we will derive risk and reliability. So it is, how it is R times of out of N trials. R times out of N trials. R times out of N trials. Okay? If once in 10 successive years means only once the flood is coming in 10 years. Twice in 10 years, then twice flood is coming in 10 years. We will solve one question to see how this is happening, okay? So this is binomial event. Now next is, we will calculate what is risk and reliability. Risk for an event and reliability, which is more important. If we take the reliability, reliability means not also at one time, that magnitude of flood will happen, okay? So zero times, zero times out of n, n trials. So R will become here zero. 0 times out of n trials. That, that Then only we can say reliability. If once also it is happening, then we cannot say that we can rely on that. Because once also that magnitude of flood will happen, it will make a catastrophic failure. The whole village, so many lives, so many destruction will happen. That's why we are more concerned. That's why we do frequency analysis, right? So, first is reliability. First I will take the case of reliability. <coughs> so, I will take the case of first reliability. How to calculate the reliability? Reliability means R will be 0, okay? No, any time that much magnitude of flood will not happen, okay? So, N, R will be equal to 0. Put R is equal to 0, so we will be getting N C 0, N C 0, P to the power 0, Q to the power N minus 0. So, what it is? <coughs> what it will come? Q to the power N. So, reliability is equal to so, if you want to calculate the reliability, it will be equal to Q to the power N. Q to the power N. So, Q is here what? 1 minus P. You can write it as 1 minus P. So, it will be 1 minus P to the power N. So, this is reliability. This is called as reliability. <coughs> Now we will calculate what is risk. Okay, reliability means 1 minus you need to remember this value. If you don't, see no need to remember. If you know this binomial formula also, then you can put R. The thing is, you can either you can derive or you should remember this reliability value. Okay, reliability means no, any time this value. Suppose if I take 80 centimeter of rainfall, so any time that value is never equaled or exceeded. Never. It will never happen. Okay. Or if at least once it comes, means that is risk. In the question, that will be the only hint. Whether you have to calculate the risk or reliability. They will not give you directly whether to calculate risk or reliability. They will ask you that once in its, at least once in a lifetime, this value of rainfall will be exceeded. If at least came, means that is risk. Okay. <clears throat> so next is how to calculate the risk. Here only I will be telling you how to calculate the risk. Second is risk. Risk. Okay. So risk is at least, if in the question it is given at least once, if it is given, this is hint. In the question hint if it is given like at least once. At least once. So you should understand that we have to calculate risk at least once or more. At least once or more. At least once means at least once it is exceeded. It is equaled or exceeded. It is equal or exceeded. It is equal or exceeded. Okay. So, that case we have to calculate the risk. So, how we calculate the risk is, see, at least once or more than that. Okay. So, the value will be equal to, see, you can see that if you say that, to, uh, we are seeing binomial event. Either it can happen or it cannot happen. So for hap fin, no, no happening, it is not happening. There is no risk. The value is 1 minus p to the power n or you can say q to the power n. So if risk is there, if reliability is q to the power n, then risk is 1 minus q to the power n. 
1 minus q to the power n. How? If we see, for probability of happening an event is p. For not happening is 1 minus p. Similarly, for reliability, if there is no risk, the value is 1 minus p to the power n. If there is risk, its value is 1 minus q. 1 minus q to the power n. That is same as 1 minus p to the power n. So this is risk. Okay. So this you have to remember. This value you have to remember. Risk. Okay. See, reliability means it is never equaled or exceeded. So if it is exceeded, then it will be 1 minus that reliability. That is called as risk. Okay, so we will see one question based on this so that you clearly understand that how to calculate the reliability. In this the main challenge, when you see the question, in this the main challenge is to identify what is return period and what is design life of structure. So, my dear students, please be careful whenever it is given as rainfall data. In the rainfall data you have been mentioned the time period. So that is return period always. Okay, when rainfall data, if time period is mentioned, that is <coughs> Return period. Okay. And sometimes it, it will happen that you will be given in the question itself that the T is the return period. Okay. So return period if T has been given to you, you can calculate the probability as 1 upon T. Okay. If return period is T is given to you, you can calculate the, suppose return period is given as 10. So probability will be equal to 1 upon 10 that is equal to 0.1. Obviously Q you can also calculate 1 minus 0.1. And then you can put the values and you can calculate reliability and risk. Or if it is happening once in 10 years, then 10C1, like that you can calculate the answers. Okay. So we will solve one question to see what is the application. Okay. So before that, I will summarize the things. Okay. Why we do frequency analysis? Why we do frequency analysis? To, to see whether there is risk or not for constructing a particular hydraulic structure, whether that hydraulic structure which is designed for a design life, it is safe or not. For that we have to do frequency analysis. Two things are more important and most important in this, that is what we do analysis based on probability and return period. Okay, probability we calculate as simple mathematics, probability means favorable event divided by total number of events. Return period means the time, inter time interval between the two events. Okay, so what we do for doing, uh, for doing the frequency analysis, we do plotting position method. In that what we do is whatever the, see since we are doing it with probability, we collect the past 30 years data and arrange it in decreasing order. Then we assign rank to them and we calculate return period based on the rank. And return period formula is given by 3. First is California, that return period value T is equal to N by M. N is total number of data and M is the rank is high, assigned. So for return period we have 3 formulas, T is equal to N by M. Weber's formula T is equal to N plus 1 divided by M and Hazen's formula N divided by M minus 0.5. Then we, we have solved by, uh, binomial event. It is represented by NCR, P to the power R, Q to the power N minus R. Okay. And then if I want to calculate reliability, reliability means that that amount of flood will never happen. Okay. Then if I want to calculate reliability, it is 1 minus P to the power and if I want to calculate risk, if reliability is this, risk will be 1 minus 1 minus p to the power n. Okay. Till now, only this much is uh, this much is sufficient for this topic. Okay. So, we can solve the question. The main challenge is to identify the return period and the design life. So, we will see the question then you will understand. One question we will solve. So, for gate also, they will, uh, gate also, the very simple question has been asked till now. Easily, you will be able to do that question. So we will, we will be taking one question to understand this concept, okay? First we will understand this concept, then we will solve one gate question. So the first question is, <coughs> the question is, on the basis of rainfall map, the 50 years, 24 hour maximum rainfall. See, on the basis of rainfall map, you have been given on the basis of question is, on the basis of rainfall map, on the basis of rainfall map. 50 years, uh, 50 years, 24 hour maximum rainfall, 50 years, 24 hour maximum rainfall, Fifty years, 24 hour maximum rainfall at Delhi is found to be 16 centimeter. At Delhi is found to be 16 centimeter is found to be 
16 centimeter. Okay. <laughs> then find the probability of a 24 hour rainfall of magnitude equal to or greater than 16 centimeter occurring in Delhi. See, this is the question. Find the probability. Find the probability. Probability of find the probability of a 24 hour rainfall. Find the probability of a 24 hour rainfall. 24 hour rainfall of magnitude equal to of magnitude equal to or greater than 16 centimeter. 16 centimeter occurring at Delhi. The first part is first part is part A is once in 10 successive year. Once in 10 successive year. Once in 10 successive year. The second part is twice in 10 successive years. Twice in 10 successive years. The third part is, the third part is at least once in, at least, at least once in 10 successive years. Okay, see, now the thing is you have to, you have to identify what is return period and what is the design life of structure here. Okay, you have to see N, what this formula is N C R p to the power r, q to the power n minus r. So in this, n is the design life of, uh, of the structure. n is what? Design life. Design life. Design life of structure. So here you have to identify what is n and what is p. That is the main task of this question. Okay, see, what I said is if in the rainfall data, for the rainfall data, if you have been given the time period, that is what return period. You can see here on the basis of rainfall map, 50 years, 24 hours. So, return period is what here? 50 years. You have to take care. So, return period T is 50. So, T is 50. And what is uh, P here? Uh, what is uh, T is 50. So, you can calculate the P. What is the design life? 10. N is what here? 10. So, if t is 50, you can calculate the probability. Probability is equal to 1 by 50. That is equal to 0 0.02. Probability you can calculate. So, now for the first part we will see. For the first part we will see part A. How to do part A? Part A. For part A, if we see, <laughs> once and 10 successive year. So, r is equal to 1 and n is equal to 10. So, what it will be? Probability once in 10 successive year would be equal to 10 C1 P to the power R that is 1 and Q to the power N minus R 10 minus 1. So, it will be 10 C1 P is how much? 0 0.02 and Q will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.02 to the power 9. So, you can calculate. See, NCR how we will, we will calculate NCR which is equal to N factorial divided by N minus R factorial into R factor. Okay. So, this we can easily calculate. We can put the values and we can get the answer. So, once in 10 successive year, the aim of uh, the aim of this question is to tell you how to calculate. Okay. So, what is how to put the values, how to identify what is return period and what is the design life of the structure. So, you can get the answer as probability you will get it as 16.67 percentage. Probabilities as 16.67 percentage if you will solve. Okay, now B part. If we see the B part, how it will be? B part twice in 10 successive years. Obviously, R will be 2 here and N is 10, same. All the data is same. Okay, so how it will be? 10C2, P to the power 2, Q to the power 10 minus 2. So, you can, you can again put the values 10 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 8 factorial into P is how much? 0 0.02 whole square and Q is 1 minus 0 0.02 to the power 8. So, you can solve again and you can get the answer. So, this type of questions only you, can, you will be asked. 
So you, if you put the values, you will be getting 1.53 percentage. 1.53 percentage. Now third part. See in the third part, it is given as at least once in 10 successive years. It is given as at least once in 10 successive years. At least once means what? At least once means you have to calculate the risk. See here came now. You have to calculate the risk. You know the P value. You know the Q P value. You can easily calculate the risk. Risk. Put the formula and you can get the risk value. So C part is risk. To calculate risk. So risk, how we calculate risk? Risk is equal to because why? At least once is coming. So we have to calculate risk. Risk is equal to 1 minus 1 minus P to the power N which is equal to 1 minus 1 minus P is how much? 0 0.02 to the power N. N is what? 10. So you can get the you can get the probability that at least once in 10 successive At least once means it can happen more number of times also. Okay. So we cannot take R as 1 because if it is once in 10 years then we can we can take R as 1. At least once means at least once. One time it will happen or more also it can happen. So we cannot take R as 1. Okay. So it will be coming as 18.29 percentage. 18.29 percentage after putting the values. So this was the concept and how to proceed with the question. This simple question I have to, to explain you how to put the values and how to calculate the percentage. <clears throat> One gate question we will see. Simple gate question. See in that gate question it was very direct question. So you can directly calculate the probability over there. So the gate question is a 1 hour rainfall of 10 centimeter magnitude it is asked in gate 2013. Gate 2013. Simple question also they will ask sometimes. Sometimes you have to put the values. Okay. So here it is given as a 1 hour rainfall of 10 centimeter magnitude. A 1 hour rainfall of 10 centimeter magnitude 10 centimeter magnitude magnitude of a station has a return period of magnitude of a station has a return period of has a return period. See in this question you have been given the return period. So no need to worry about that. Okay. Have a, has a return period of 50 years. Has a return period of 50 years. The probability that a one hour rainfall, the probability that a one hour, the probability that a one hour rainfall, a one hour rainfall, the probability that a one hour rainfall of magnitude 10 centimeter, of magnitude 10 centimeter or more, of magnitude 10 centimeter or more will occur in each of two successive years. Will occur in each of in each of two successive years. In each of two successive years. <clears throat> so how we will do is see it is in the in the question you see a one hour rainfall of 10 centimeter magnitude of a station has a return period of 50 years. Here you no need to worry about the return period. It is already given in the question. Okay. So the probability that a one hour rainfall of magnitude 10 centimeter or more will occur in each of two successive years. Find this line. Each of two successive years. Okay. And the option given are also very confusing. If you solve this, you'll, you'll get you'll get at least two options out of this. If you do the mistake. It is first is 0 0.04. Second is 0 0.2. C is 0 0.02. And D is 0 0.0004. 0 0.0004. See if you see the return period given as what? You see the solution. The return period is how much? 50 years. Okay. Return period is 50 years. So if I want to calculate... If I want to calculate the probability, probability will be equal to 1 upon 50, which is equal to 0 0.02. See, this is also the option. But what it is written in each of two successive years, it is given as, not, see, once in 10 years, if we are saying twice in 10 years, means two times any time, we can apply that formula. But here it is saying each of two successive years. Means for one year, if the probability is 0 0.02, for two years, the probability will be equal to 0 0.02 whole square. 
as simple as that. Here you no need to apply that formula. Why? Because if we take two times in ten successive years, then two times can be any year. If it is if I am taking 2001 to 2010, then it can first it can happen in 2002, then it can happen in 2008, it can happen in 2006, anywhere. Okay, so that's why we can apply that formula. But it is saying each of two successive years. That's why we have to do is what p is equal to 0 0.02. So we will be getting 0 0.004. So option is D. Option is D. Very simple question it was. Okay, so this type of questions you can expect in the gate examination from this. One is you can ask to calculate the risk or reliability. Risk means at least once if they said then it is risk. If they said that never, never equal or exceeded. If, if in the question it is said that never equal or exceeded 10 centimeter, then we have to calculate the reliability. Or if they are giving three, three times in 10 years or four times in 10 years, then you have to. And mind it, whenever you want to calculate the return period, then you have to think that if, the, if, it, if that value is given in the, see you have to understand the language properly. Okay, if the rainfall data in that uh, return period, if the time period is given, that we have to take it as return period. Okay. 